action on set and take one action hey everyone richie carlton here we're happy to hear another awesome filemaker training today at fmtraining.tv you know, welcome to another awesome day of fm uh, filemaker training at fmtraining.tv i'm richie carlton here and somewhere i have my glasses i can barely see anyway welcome to all you folks there i want to welcome i want to say happy birthday to the united states marine corps Hoorah! now i was an army guy but professional great deal of professional respect for the u.s marine corps um every every marine is a rifleman first right the days vary on what our topics and training topics are they vary from basic to beginning to advanced to almost administrative today is kind of a funky mess of of a technical data and administrative in one package so what we're doing is there's been this kind of ongoing kind of recurring conversation even with my, some of my own team who's trying they're trying to get certified but they get stuck in certain little spots in the certification test so what i've done is i've taken notes about where people are getting stuck um and what we're going to do is without me telling you too much about what we're doing um, i'm just simply say that these are not the exact questions and exact answers that on the certification test but I have some uh, notes about topics that you should be prepared to, in your head, understand. And so partly what we're going to do is we'll be talking about uh, the kind of the trickier areas of the certification test. Mostly this, people have the hardest time with the server area, the ODBC area, because for most FileMaker developers, they don't, servers, you know, Claris is trying to abstract the server business away from them, right? And so in Claris's ideal world, they would handle the servers and you just build the apps. So understand that that's kind of a thing. So, uh, but there's a lot of developers who are just not very good at server and they don't do ODBC connectivity very often. Now there are people, and there's some at my company who do ODBC all the time, so they were the perfect people to talk about this. I had some conversation with them yesterday on this topic, and so we'll be able to go through some of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be verbally going through some stuff and Margaret, our ACE assistant, is gonna show her screen and uh, talk, uh, take notes as we go. So what you'll do is you'll be able to get the notes as we uh, get into this. So what I'm going to do is before we get running on that real quick, let's talk about the upcoming broadcast schedule for FM Training on TV. So tomorrow, more awesomeness from uh, Mr. Watson. So Watson is really high speed, low drag. Kind of like yesterday, we had this high speed, low drag, ja uh, low, low jag, high speed, low jag with Leland Long, fantastic developer. He built Miss, uh, Mr. Pa the original Pac-Man in the FileMaker, and it's pretty damn authentic. I mean, it looks like legit, and uh, I was impressed. So, um, so we have all these great people that are coming to us. If you have ideas about topics you'd like to see, if you're interested in the JavaScript, having a JavaScript class, then once again, it's not going to be a free class, but it won't, won't be horrifically expensive either, either. But we, you know, Leland's not going to do it for free. So it's one of those kind of things that there has to be funding attached to that so it's one of those kind of business things right so since the folks that are here are the people we love and trust you are know, re recurring people what would interest you what how many you know an hour a day an hour and a half a day two hours a day of training for a week two weeks what would that look like to you right uh, I can tell you as an instructor in aviation when you start doing programming or you're trying to teach someone how to fly a, a helicopter or aircraft for example the little brain saturate almost uh, automatically at 1.1 to 1.2 hours it's not even you don't even make it to an hour and a half but 1.1 1.2 is the ideal training length if you go beyond that typically the stuff that you're learning at the last end of that or you should be retaining you're not retaining the knowledge so we're thinking about shorter blocks you know like an hour 90 minutes a day for a week or two something like that um so we have that coming up and then uh i will be in the los osos office the san luis obispo office there with jacob taylor uh doing Q server q a on friday and then monday and tuesday we're going to be doing azure open uh uh basically oauth integration but basically single sign-on so you sign on to your mic you, you sign on to this azure service which is a free service strictly speaking and then it, you handle that. It's like Active Directory. It makes your administration of your FileMaker files so much easier if you have a team of people. If you have eight or ten people, it's fine. You can just run their own passwords and set them up. But if you have a bunch of files and you have a bunch of staff, then doing Active Directory is a much simpler thing. So uh, very, very good. So welcome, CJ, from Berlin. Ed Bradley is buzzing. Mr. Watson. Hey, Mr. Watson, how are you? From Hamburg. So Mr. Watson will be here tomorrow. And so today is kind of a, a different kind of uh, day. So what we're going to do, be doing, oh, as a reminder, please support the channel. This is not for Mr. Watson or the other, other of you who are, uh, have, have our training. But if you don't have our training, please support the channel. Purchase one of our training bundles, okay? 
it's hours of many, many upwards of 100 hour plus hours of, it says 60 over here. That's wrong. I really need Margaret, someone to fix that for me on that page. That is a lie. That is a gross underestimate of the amount of hours. And 60 in just one course, these bundles come with all the courses. So it's 100 plus hours of detailed uh, training and knowledge. Um, with animations and stuff like that about 15 10 15 minute videos so topic 10 15 minutes and then another topic 10 15 minutes things like that so very 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 good stuff so uh margaret you want to share your screen are you sharing your screen you are okay so we're going to be talking about the certification test here i'm just going to show the right side margaret this section here kind of zoom in on that a little bit i guess and so we're talking about the certification test in the areas that people get stuck in and so what we want to do is kind of talk about that a little bit. I have some notes here that I've written. I'm going to throw these out. Let's talk about uh, areas in the FileMaker certification test that you should be thinking about. Um, thinking about. So, for example, we're talking about servers. In fact, next week we're going to be talking about OAuth a lot. Why don't we talk about some things in OAuth? So if you're going to do uh, connect OAuth to your FileMaker server and your FileMaker file, uh, what are a, a, a couple of... What are benefits? What would be benefits and what would not be benefits of doing OAuth, right? So if you're doing OAuth, right, uh, you know, you uh, multi-factor authentication is a big one, right? People say, hey, I want to get a verification on my phone or an email or something, right? Uh, basic FileMaker security doesn't provide that, right? So multi-factor authentication would be a definite plus, right? Um and so then, and then, and also some of these, uh, like uh, Active Directory, OAuth, and these other services, and we're going to talk about these. Uh, we're going to be talking about Azure because it's the one that best fits. I'm not a big Microsoft fan, but the Azure Active Directory, which is Microsoft's kind of cloud service, their attempt to compete with Amazon, right? Um, you know, like Microsoft, you know, it's like, hey, someone comes up with a great technology. Me too. It's like watching the Chinese come up with new fighter jets. All they do is copy the American design. So, um, that, just the way they are, right? Why, why build something new and original when you can steal a design from someone else? So that's kind of Microsoft's thing. So, but they are Active Directory and Azure is pretty solid. It's one of the one of the three main Active Directory solutions that are supported with the current release of FileMaker 19.3.x. Right. So there we go. Um, so let's talk about so OAuth providers. So so you're going to do a single sign-on. You log in once, so then Microsoft knows you on your computer are who you are, right? Makes sense. Um, and then you're going to then it would allow you to get into any of the files. So obviously they could have more uh, complex or comprehensive password requirements. Like you need an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter and a symbol and a number and a whatever, right? And more than 12 characters. Those kind of rules don't exist in the FileMaker platform um, because Claris decided they never <laughs> wanted to do it or whatever. Um, so anyway, so so uh, multi-factor authentication, complex rules are a good one. Um, now maybe some things that what what does Active what what do what does OAuth integration or Active Directory integration not do for you? Does it make you rich and famous? No. Uh, does it automatically encrypt the, the communication between your server and you, the user. No, it's authentication. So what what encrypts? Okay, test question for those of you in the Slack. Watson's just talking. He he, he writes like he talks. So it's just kind of like this long conversation where he's talking with. I am fine. I am fine. Snakes case is my favorite. Right. So what is so someone who's not Watson? One of you other folks, Foxy Jack, Ed, the other Ed, Gadidi, Jericho, Ken, Larry, Marines. Um, Scott Kane, Schmeagle, um, or Michelle, Michael, Paul, uh, Lynn, what is the technology that, it, that's going to allow encryption or security between the FileMaker server and a client? Pro, Go, or even, I guess, WebDirect, right? What is that technology? What do we call that? No. Ed, good question. Let's talk about this some more. So, uh, we talked about it earlier. It's the SSL encryption. SSL encryption. So this is very important. So everyone listen, okay? This is super important. Watson, you can just, this is way, this is like kind of beginning and intermediate, kind of more of an intermediate conversation. So let's talk about all the levels of encryption in the FileMaker platform and what Claris will call them, okay? So encryption over the network or through the network or point to point, you'll hear the words point to point or through the network or between a server and a client, that is an SSL certificate, allows the data to be encrypted 
and you're authenticating that the server is who you think it is, uh, et cetera. Does that make sense? So that's SSL encryption. So when you go HTTPS on the server, that is encryption on a web browser. Uh, and FileMaker uses port 5003. I don't think they test on this anymore, but it's something to know. And that is you can turn on SSL encryption and file from FileMaker server cloud, and then the client see that. That's SSL. That's point to point. Now, the file, Ed, Larry, yeah, Larry had it right. Ed, so let's talk about this, Ed. Um, ear. Ear is an important. It's one of the four main encryptions that you have on FileMaker. So you have uh, SSL point to point. Then you have ear, encryption at rest. FileMaker calls it ear. We call it ear. Their engineering team calls it ear. But the engineering team didn't write the certification test. They don't call it ear anywhere in the test. They call it database encryption. I want to scream when I read this, right? I want to hear these things, right? And so they will say in the certification test, database encryption, that means ear. That means the FileMaker file, the file, the FMP12 file, is inside that file is encrypted. It's scrambled. And you need the encryption uh, key to unlock it. Make sense? So that is database encryption. So to protect the FileMaker file, you really need SSL for point to point across the wire. And then the file itself, because that's just across the network, the file itself with SSL isn't encrypted. It's unprotected. So then, um, I mean, it's kind of protected against anyone who's not really a malicious hacker, but anyone with any years of experience could figure out how to pry the file open, right? Or use one of those password hack files. The password hackers for the FileMaker platform, they're out there, you put it on there. If the file is has a password on it, but it's not encrypted, it'll pop it open. If it's encrypted, there's nothing that you can do to get the data out, right? Short of the NSA trying to physically break the file. So, um, Margaret, if you have questions along the way, uh, feel free to add. So that makes sense, Ed. So we got SSL, then you got encryption at rest, which Claris marketing department calls database encryption. And that's what the, and remember, the marketing department is basically developer relations. They're the ones that came up with the test. Okay, and so that's uh, database encryption. Then there is also uh, file field level encryption where you can actually in, 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 encrypt, and there, there are a couple test questions on the certification test about encrypting individual fields. Like here's a field, encrypt it. Um, and here's the key for that. That is in the test. We've had videos on that um, in our training, in the wonderful training that's over here. We have wind uh, videos on that specific topic. Um, go watch them. We don't have a planned live uh, stream session on it. So most of you have my training. Go do a search for uh, encryption. Type the word encryption and the word field in the search term, and you should come up with that video. So those are the three, and there's one more encryption I'm trying to think about and figure out where that's at. But there's basically essentially four of them, okay? Uh, cool. Uh, uh, there are secure containers, I guess, yeah. Um, that wasn't probably the fourth one I was thinking of, but yeah, there, there are containers that are secure and not secure. Secure means that Claris automatically encrypts them on its own. You don't have to put the key in. Um, and, not, and then open, so it's open and secure on containers, right? And that's, that is part of the uh, questions on the test. They will ask you about that. So once again, reminder, so back to authentication, the Active Directory, the OAuth, O-A-T-H, O-A-U-T-H, so it's OAuth, one word. I lost my thing, Margaret, where that? there it is right there. Um, that All that is is uh, another outside service that, that FileMaker server has been told to trust it authenticates the person and lets them in. And when it what it what it gives the fi the FileMaker server or FileMaker Cloud, it says, "Here is a user, and this is the group that they're part of. A group they define a group, and that basically group is attached to a privilege set. If that makes sense, right? So it's basically attaching it to a privilege uh, set uh, that you have in the FileMaker platform, right? So privilege set called." Uh, secretarial staff or warehouse employees or something like that. And so then you, all you have to do is instead of, and so you still set up the privileges the same way, you're just not going to manage the actual username and password for that thing. That's all it does. It abstracts the username and password out of it for you. Okay. So very, very important. Um, so cool. Um, cool. All right. So next question. Any questions we have? Security. Security equals privilege set, security by obscurity. Yeah, yeah, so that's where you kind of try to hide things, right? So we've, we've talked about that before. Um, hopefully most of these people remember this. So 
let's talk about uh okay here we go so um <laughs> okay this is kind of a jacob taylor kind of question we've had a live stream on this topic for those of you who are not watching once again he's typing uh hi jeremy how's it going welcome I'm not sure which jeremy that is uh which container um which uh if I said, uh, someone says, well, you know, what, what can you do with container storage to improve the speed of your FileMaker or server, right? And basically, uh, if you haven't watched Jacob Taylor's live stream on this topic, then you, you don't remember this. So does anyone remember the, the uh, pivoting onto the, the, the uh, storage uh, uh, of containers option? of you know so open storage secure storage uh claris likes to throw those out as possible answers on how to make things faster it doesn't in you know, making secure storage doesn't make things faster in fact when you start automatically encrypting stuff you're going to have about a five or ten percent performance hit so that doesn't really help and open 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 uh non-secure containers isn't helpful at all um, but then there's other things like in filemaker you go into layout mode and you can say optimize that container for images right or optimize it for video right that'll make it that'll make your filemaker uh you make your filemaker server backups run faster no there's one thing you can do and what you do is in filemaker server we've done a live stream on this is where you tell filemaker server back up these database files here back up these containers separately to this other drive on a different schedule that makes sense so if you're a company with a lot 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 lots of gigs of containers uh and maybe a gig of text data like number data text data like this over here is all text data most filemaker systems have you know this compresses and is very small but images and contracts and pdfs and things that get stuck into a you know like the inspections for ed the fire inspections if you have a scanned copy of that or whatever the violation is for those people it gets scanned in a container those get really big so you can actually set those to be backed up separately we talked about that in a live stream so uh what you want to do is um uh let's see um you want to store that you, you would want to store the containers uh externally is kind of the idea not internal the containers are not inside the file but they're external to the file and then if asked if asked i don't know that you even asked on the test about this but you'd want to set those on a separate backup schedule so you want the containers to be stored external to the file and have that ideally on a separate backup schedule um and no to interactive containers but that uh, the, i think the question had to do with more about server backup speed and things like that i think that was a question like that once again the exact wording i don't know but uh this kind of the thing so let's talk about uh you should know um if, if someone says what sort of X, X, sql data sources are certified for you can go to google so basically any at anything with with filemaker server you should know what it can connect to what it's a what, what it's certified to connect to right and so i this is out of google i did a search for this in google uh what sql data sources are certified for FileMaker 19 and Google grabbed it off the Claris website. So it's a bunch of uh, versions of Microsoft SQL, um, uh, MySQL, Oracle database, or Oracle uh, database, uh, uh, IBM DB2, and I think Postgres is in there as well. Um, but what Claris will do is they'll throw a lot of um, a lot of times you can get the correct answer, or you can make an educated guess on the test. Um, by um, removing the things that are just like flagrant, flagrantly wrong, right? Like when Claris makes up something. Part of this is like some of you, I, I was having this conversation with some of my staff yesterday. Some of the things in the test make more sense than what's actually in the product. It's kind of funny, right? So we'll run into that, but you, but we'll throw these out as things not to be faked out by. In fact, someone goes, one of my staff goes, well, this, ET, this certification test should be like a feature request list for the things that we need to put in the product, right? <laughs> so, uh, so they put things in the, in the test that make more sense than actually how the product works. So it's kind of funny like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about this next week, but I want to do it right now briefly, uh, talk about this. So... Um, when you do Active uh, Directory, right, you do this OAuth stuff, right? Once again, you may or may not be using this. I don't use it that often, but RCC is starting to use the Azure Active Directory stuff. Um, when you, when a user connects through this uh, service provider, right, a lot of times you like go to places and you say, hey, what's your username and password or log in using Google, right? 
that kind of thing. That's what that is. That's the same thing, right? You're using a front-end trusted authority to authenticate you into a service, right? Um, so when you say get, there's a get function called get parentheses account type, right? So you have the account name, the username. There's all these get functions you can do about the person. Keep in mind that there is this get called get account type. And I can tell you right here is that if you... Uh, you know, Claris will on the test will say, well, what is it going to say if you log into an Active Directory account and um, and uh, and you have full access privileges? What is the account type likely to say, right? And uh, and so that's kind of you know once again they're asking a lot of these OAuth kind of authorization kind of questions. You need to learn this stuff. But um, I can tell you that when I logged in, did it with Azure. Azure came back and said uh, right here it said hey, uh, Azure. AD, I think is what it said, or something like that. So, of course, it's, of course, account type that, you know, that, that they're going to throw you all these other bones that sound good, like, oh, you know, you're a full access person. Well, that's the privilege set level, right? But not really the account type, right? Um, so, so, so you might want to play with a couple of these get functions that are uh, get account type, get account name, understand what it looks like, because um, those will be uh, that, that kind of, that get function specifically is on the test. Um, questions we have file uh, authentication is important for security correct so okay so this is great what three OAuth providers are supported by FileMaker and um, and so it's like which ES which ODBC databases are or systems are supported right you kind of need to know it's the OD, ODBC databases generally historically are Oracle MySQL and Microsoft SQL. And then there is additional support for Postgres, I think. Um, so with OAuth, as of FileMaker 19.3, now there is a 19.4 that's coming. They, I think they're going to widen this out a little bit, 19.4. But remember, this test is based upon 19 whatever. Uh, so OAuth I, I, identity providers that are supported with 19.1, 2, 19, all the way to 19.3. Amazon, Google, Azure. Uh, and these, and so these are, um, so Amazon service, uh, eight, or correction, correction, uh, I screwed that up. Stop. Amazon, not Amazon. Yeah, AWS, AWS, Google, and Microsoft Azure. Okay, those are the three. Okay, uh, Facebook is not. If you see a, a, someone saying, "Hey, you should authenticate with Facebook," right? If you, anyone authenticates with Facebook or puts anything, Facebook is a. a mm, if you want all your secrets stolen immediately, just use uh, the Facebook app on your phone, right? It's not a, it's not a, <laughs> if you read the privacy statement, they own everything that's on your, they're, they're likely to report everything on your phone to Facebook and use that for you. So, so Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, right? Uh, AWS, if you see a reference to AWS, you're looking for a reference to AWS um, and uh, Google right those are the three we're using azure because of some benefits it has and it also happens to be free so that's why you'll be seeing that monday and tuesday of this next week jeremy says quick question does a encryption at rest incur a performance penalty as well yes five to ten percent um a performance penalty um i've never that's never been the biggest problem with encryption at rest this is the file encryption and this is not on the test that part about five to ten percent is my giving you knowledge and information um, the problem with encryption arrest is people put passwords down and they don't write them down. And it's, and it's very unforgiving about this. And um, we've had people lose databases entirely. I've actually lost a sample test file. At one point I did, I did a ear password. I didn't write it down. I forgot. And then, you know, six months later, I couldn't find it or remember it. And I, you know, lost that file. So um, it's, it's, if you're a kind of a person, you're working 5,000 miles an hour at your desk doing fraud, you know, high speed stuff, and you're not good about writing it down. I'd, I mean, I know it's supposed to be, you never do this, but for people who have ear passwords, if in doubt, write it down and stick it, a post-it note right on your screen, right? Or on the bottom of your monitor. I know that's stupid, but better there than nowhere, because otherwise if it's nowhere, then you're really in big trouble, right? Ideally, you'd write it down and put it in a safety deposit box or in a little book somewhere, right? Most people who are going to try to hack you are not going to break into your house to get that information or your office. Now, you might have an employee who has access to your office walk by and see your, your information on your screen on a post-it note. That's why post-it notes aren't great. They also tend to blow off, fall off, and get lost. So, 
Um, yeah, so there is a performance penalty even with all – anytime you encrypt, you're doing work, there's a performance penalty, but it's pretty minor. The biggest problem with ear is that people just lose it. Um, the problem with SSL is that it's sufficiently complicated to install that we have to do training sessions on it and explain it to people, and and people just like, right? So how do I not do SSL encryption, right? So um, – the, ear, the database encryption is to protect the file if someone physically gets the file. If they put a thumb drive on your computer, thumb drive, right, little thumb drive, stick it in the computer, copy the file on here, take the file away. The ear is supposed to protect it while it's here on this. Not be, uh, The SSL is point to point, so hackers are listening on the Internet or monitoring your network or something like that. SSL protects against that. Uh, ear protects against um, this, hopefully, right? And the lock of the door on your server, hopefully. Okay, questions, right, Jeremy? Thank you. Right, great questions. All right, so uh, certification tests, general questions, right? Areas that we want to focus on, server-related stuff. Um, we talked about OAuth. So everyone understands what OAuth is. That's where you can go out and um, have another service authenticate the user into the file. And once that authentication is done, then that authentication service is it walks away. It's only involved a little bit at the handoff at the beginning of the access of the file, and then they're out of the picture. Um, but if Active Directory is offline, the cloud's offline, and you need access to the file, um, that's a good question, right? I think it's in the test buried somewhere. So say that when you're setting up a FileMaker file and you have a file, uh, if I can go to, here's FileMaker, let me just open recents, da 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 da. Let's see if I can even get to it right now, the mock data generator. See if I can get to this. This is a sample file that we were using for some stuff uh, with the credit card stuff. So if I go file, manage, security. So this is where it comes in. So this says FileMaker file or external server, right? There's those three supported ones, right? You see these right here? Okay. Now, I think on the test... I need to clarify that because I think at one point they tried to throw, uh, a, uh, I think someone they were trying to um, uh, mix up Amazon and another, a different Amazon as another dog, bone to throw. And I need to uh, check on that. But these are the three officials right here in the app, right? You can see these right here. But notice that this right here says the, the type. Remember we said get account type. This type is FileMaker, right? The FileMaker file is authenticating it, right? If I open up uh, the Azure one, you would see it would be over here, it would be separate, right? If I say Google Azure, then you'd have this different, or and Microsoft Azure, you would see this list right here, right? Now, here's the thing. If, 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 if you set up all the access on this over here, including your full access, think about this, full access down here, okay? And then you say, oh, I don't want to deal with FileMaker, local FileMaker access anymore. So I remove these and turn these off and save this, right? And they're not active anymore or removed. Um, and then you're trying to log on and the Microsoft Azure service is offline or Google or Amazon's offline. How do you get into the file? All right? You even if you even if you're on the same network in the office, right? And so, what, so we've had people actually lock themselves out of their files almost permanently because the only way to authenticate, like their admin access, like super user access, like I'm a developer, I'm going to work on my file. And that person is still using Active Directory. If that Active Directory system, that OAuth system is not running, they can't get into the file. They can't at all get in the file. So you always want to leave at least a single this is best practices, right, with quotes, air quotes around it. You want to have a, uh, a FileMaker access still, this full access, right? So you still have your one super user administrative. You could come into the file directly without going to that external service to authenticate, right? People have screwed themselves on this. FileMaker will allow you to do this, but I think it's uh, if it used to be a test question or is a test question, but I remember seeing this before saying, you know, best practice, hey, do you want to lock? It doesn't say do you want to lock your out of the file, but that's what it should say. If we were being speaking frankly here amongst friends, which I hope we all are, right? So let's talk about ESS. What is ESS? Okay. ESS is so back in the old days, uh, FileMaker had the ability, server still does, the ability for FileMaker server or FileMaker Pro, actually in Mac or Windows, to connect to a Oracle, MySQL, or Microsoft SQL 
data source, okay? And you could basically import data and interact with it. Now, Claris came out with this external SQL source ESS capability, which is where FileMaker, you, you set this up, and, and how you set it up is all over the test. It just is. <clears throat> Maybe we can cover some of that. It depends how much time we have. And so ESS is where FileMaker you, treats, like, for example, make this more simple for you. I'm going to cancel out of this, discard changes. I'm in my FileMaker file, and I say file. I say manage database, right? And so say we have these relationships that are in here, blah, blah, blah. We have these table occurrences and stuff like this. Well, what if you had a table occurrence and a relationship that was from Oracle, an external system, and then you still, and it was over here, and you cross-connected it, and then you could look at the data from the Oracle system. The Oracle system is feeding data to FileMaker server. FileMaker server is looking at the relationship and then displaying that data to you. Pretty cool. It's kind of slow. Um, so you have to think about performance and things like that. But um, basically, FileMaker becomes a front end. A, that's a generic software term. A front end for this other data system, this Oracle data or MySQL data or, Mic or Microsoft SQL data. That's called ESS. How you set that up, of course, is that you have to set up an ODBC driver. You have to set up a DSN. Then you go to manage and you go to external data sources. Notice it doesn't say external FileMaker sources. It says data sources because they could be, <clears throat> these are all type FileMaker, but if I had another one in here, I say create a new one, this dialogue, you should be expected to be, they're going to ask you questions about this dialogue, okay? So the, the, the outside source, if it's a FileMaker file, it's FileMaker or it's ODBC, right? And then you have to specify a username and password to get into that, ODBC source, right? And so, so, so the thing is, is that if file, if you connect to this other system, um, and you and you connect to it, and it suddenly it's you put it in this list here, and then when you go to field definitions, because you put it in that external source list, you say, oh, I want a new table occurrence, so I'm gonna pop down here. I'm gonna say new table occurrence, and say show me, show me the the files, the, the, the sources I've already set up, these are FileMaker ones. And then it also would show you any of the ODBC ones you've set up, okay? So you add that in here, okay? So what you have done is you've added a representation of that. You've added a representation of the table in here. It doesn't belong here, but it's like an Oracle, uh, an Oracle table in here. That's called a shadow table, the very important concept, a shadow table terminology, okay? So, so because it, you're, def, you're in this area defining database, we're defining our FileMaker file. I can go in here and I can add a table, change a table, add a field, change a field. And I see an Oracle thing over here, so I can add and change that. No, you can't. That is very testable. I don't know how they asked the question, but you cannot, because you're in here changing the schema of your FileMaker file, FileMaker is not authorized ever to change the schema on the other ODBC system. It cannot change the schema, okay? You're like, well, what if I want to add a field to that other system? As a general rule, you can't. And the, But there are exceptions, and they test the crap out of these exceptions. They just do, okay? So it's, once again, they're trying to test and make sure you have this kind of advanced kind of skill set. So, and I'm walking you through this verbally, but you need to find some additional training on this or come back and say, hey, Richard, we want training on this. And we can do training on this, right? Or maybe it's paid training. We do it separately than the live stream because a lot of people don't care about getting certified. But if you care about it, we want it. Maybe this is something we do, you know, 90 minutes a day, every day for two weeks, right? Um, so the idea is that we cannot make a structural change to the Oracle system. FileMaker is not allowed to do that. Don't argue why good, bad, or ugly, or you don't like that idea, it's not It's not up to you, right? It's like a, like a media sandbox going, hey, Apple came out with all this small business stuff and FileMaker ain't in there. <laughs> and the point is, oh, it's the point. The point is, is that it doesn't matter what we think. We're way down the food chain here, right? We're just saying what is. So FileMaker cannot, is not allowed to make structural changes to Oracle. But you can define certain kinds of fields that would not impact the Oracle system. These are called uh, supplemental fields or supplemental field types, supplemental fields, okay? And so think about a, a kind of a field that you could define in FileMaker that really doesn't really affect the structure of FileMaker too much. If you, if you define a calculation field in FileMaker 
and it is indexed and stored, then FileMaker has to calculate for every record and then save it in the file. That would be a physical change. If you did that to Oracle, that would be a change to their structure. But if you defined a calculation that only is uh, displayed when needed and not stored, then it's a calculation field that's never saved to the structure of the file, right? Makes sense. It's never saved to the structure of the file. And uh, and it uh, and it only just, it only calculates live when it needs it. So what FileMaker does is as you connect to these other data systems, right? And you define say a couple unstored calculations, it knows it knows that those fields exist. It saves that data in our local file. Say if we connected this, this is this mock data file that's running on FileMaker server somewhere. Um, it would save those extra fields in the schema here, and then when it sees the Oracle system, it would say, oh. We, you know, Richard wants these extra non-stored calculation fields that will fire when needed, right? The other thing you can do are summary fields, right? Because summary fields, once again, they're never really saved. They're displayed on screen. They're a total or an aggregate or a running total or a, some sort of something from a found set, but they're never saved to the file. So you can define a non-stored calculation, which also means it's not indexed, non-stored, non-indexed calculation. You can also define a summary field. These are called supplemental fields that would be targeted towards a what? A shadow table. The shadow table is the Oracle table. is a shadow of it, right? Makes sense? Very, very important you understand these basic concepts. These are on the test. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a bit of encouragement. You're like, ah, oh, Richard, this is too deep for me. I don't want to learn all this, okay? Listen, to pass this, I had an engineer the other day. It doesn't matter who it is. <clears throat> Actually, an engineer, most of you've never met before. Um, and they're they're coming up through the system, and they wanted to take the certification test. I said I didn't think they could pass it. I said go ahead and take a swing at it. He this person gets sixty two percent on the test. That's a pass. The system passed him. I don't know how low you can go. I don't think you could probably go much lower than sixty two percent. So that means for ten questions, you only have to get six of them correct, basically. So the bar is not too hard, right? So if you want to learn some of these things take a swing at it and, and and take a crack at it then get that number up you're not going for 100 percent. you're not trying to master all the data like i do not know all the information in the world in filemaker watson knows more than i do but i'm pretty sure he doesn't know it all either okay no is filemaker is too big for any one person to know everything it really is too large for that i've never met anyone that was quite that sharp larry are you here i don't know if you want to like tell us what you got on the test larry took a swing at the test you don't have to larry but if you got anywhere from 40% up, if you got above 50%, you're really close to passing. All you need to learn is a couple additional items. Take the test again, okay? Um, if you're above 40%, you got a little bit more work. If you're if you're below 40%, you probably need to learn quite a bit of material about the FileMaker platform. So if you're close, yeah. So you're you're so you you still have some stuff to learn. Or you have to learn how to take the test better. But here's the thing. As you start to see the test, you take it a couple times. I know it's 100 150 bucks. Money doesn't grow on trees. You get better at seeing the questions. You also remember to go, what to go back and study. Now, one of the things they tell you to do or you sign your agreement that you won't write the questions down and share them with people. So when I'm sharing material information with you, I'm telling you areas of focus on the test. I'm not giving you the test questions. But if, but if you can understand what I'm saying, memorize these items. For example, when I say database encryption is what Claris calls ear in the test, that's fair game. I didn't say uh, pick one of three items that'll be on the run, 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 and I give you the answers, right? So we're not doing that. We didn't. We don't write them down. We don't do that. But I, I did make notes of the areas of emphasis on the platform, and I've taken the test every year for the last twenty some odd thirty years, and so as a result, they tend to recycle some of the stuff. You keep seeing questions over and over and over again. Well, okay, so let's talk about this. the engine. Uh, okay, so here's what happens. Let me give a little bit of feedback. So Schmeagel just asked a question. Nice, what would I expect a professional engineer to get? I had a couple engineers get above that. I had a couple engineers who didn't study at all who got in the 70s. And they don't do server stuff. Here's the problem. The, the test, there's a big chunk of the test that's on server, OAuth, ODBC. There's no JavaScript programming. There's nothing in there about how to build an add-on. You don't have to worry about how to build an add-on, how to code in JavaScript. Um, 
But for example, they'll ask you test uh, questions about the web viewer and five things it can do and five things it can't do and, sh and stuff like that. Um, and so you really have to, it's hard to fake your way through the test and pass. They've really designed it that it's, 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 it's uh, hard to fake your way through it. Uh, um, uh, without really kind of knowing the material. But the server, a lot of the engineers just don't do server anymore. And as a result of that, uh, it becomes an issue where they just, they, I had a, one guy who was kind of panicked. I was like, man, I haven't done a server in three years. I'm afraid to take the test and fail. I don't want you to be mad at me. And that, 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 Because for them to re maintain their highest level certification RCC, they have to be certified. Uh, if they don't eventually get certified or renew their certification, they, they get demoted, right? So it's like if it's like if I had a, if I was a Delta Airlines and I had a pilot who couldn't pass his uh, annual or biannual flight review with the FAA and wasn't re uh, rated to fly anymore, wasn't certified to fly, he could still fly, strictly speaking, the physics of it, but it's not legal to do so. Can he still make the same money at Delta Airlines? No. They have to be certified to, to, to be that pilot. My guy, it's, it's not a requirement for a developer, but at my company, it is at a the top senior level folks have to be certified. Um, so Okay, so yeah, so there's a, there are some questions here about uh, encryption functions within the FileMaker platform, right? So encryption functions. So once again, a function is like uh, and when you're writing a calculation, it's like a left or a middle or a right or a get account type. Those are all functions, right? So there's a function called um, crypt encrypt base64. So one of the things I would do, we got the training videos, go watch that. Um, because we cover it in great detail, we actually walk through it. Um, but if you go to FileMaker Help, a lot of the things that are in the test in here are really part of tools. Where's the? Oh, this has got that. Hang on, I got a different. There we go. FileMaker Help. I have a different menu set on. Whenever you're on the home screen of Starting Point, you have a different menu set up here. So I, I go to somewhere else, and then you can get Help, FileMaker Pro Help. And you could do searches up here. A lot of the answers to some of the certification questions are in the footnotes. So as well as deals, read the damn footnotes, right? Very, very, very important. Like, for example, get, let's talk about get account type. I'm off the weeds here a little bit. Let me do a get account type. Uh, account type, right? So if I was going to study the account type right now, I would read this here. And then, oh, okay, this is it. So this this is on the test right here. I get, I don't. I can just tell you, this is what I saw the other day with Active Directory, right? So count type, it'll return this. Um, it will return external if it's an external server, okay? Um, and it's Amazon, and it's, uh, yeah, interesting, cool. Uh, there are there are one or two questions, two or three questions in the test, maybe about Claris Cloud FileMaker Cloud 2, um, but it's one of those things, the area that if you're going, if you're going for 62%, don't focus on something you're not using. Just, just write that off. Like, for example, I'm not an SQL. I don't write SQL. So when someone says, hey, write a, there's a couple questions in the test that says, write this SQL statement that'll find these 12 records and sort the last three, and then it'll pour you a cup of coffee and then give you a high five. And you're like, and they, they look the same, but their little slashes will be in different spots. It's a Kyle Williams kind of question, maybe a Watson kind of question if he does SQL. I don't do SQL. I'd more rather just learn JavaScript, for example, if I was going to do something like that. So when I see a SQL, I don't study the SQL statements. And I did, and 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 I've gone through Claire's Cloud training previously. I've done. We do. We have training in our video course. The training that I'm asking you to buy. Please support the channel. Cloud 2 training is in there, but I shot that two years ago, so some of it's a little fuzzy. But uh, this stuff here, this is very much... Uh, and so what you do is you'd come down here and see if there were any footnote stuff, right? What's a footnote, right? See if it's like, oh, well, if it's this and this and this and this. Like, like say, it's like it's another te uh, one that you're definitely going to want to review. Insert... Uh, hello? If I say search for insert from device, this is definitely on the test okay it's it's it, if it wasn't on the test i'd be stunned but insert from device is a uh, script step and it's not a function it's a script step and what it allows you to do is basically um 
camera controls, bar, uh, basically camera control and uh, signature capture control and a couple things like that. So this is on the test, right? And they're going to ask some of these questions. But what I would do is like, so what you do is you see all this stuff, right? But you need to read this because they're going to they're going to ding you on th this. I know that some of this on the test, like I see some of these here and I recognize them, right? I'm not going to say which ones, but basically you need to understand what it does, right? But for example, WebDirect, does it work with WebDirect? No. Tattoo that to your ass. That's on the test. Is it compatible with server well normally insert from device you run the command and then you hold the phone up and you scan or you put a signature you do something there's this interaction that occurs after that generally what did wouldn't even make sense to work with server um so yeah so but look at then you come down here and you read the examples of how it works and then and then you find any footnotes down here and read the footnotes right read the footnotes now, you don't have to know about which exact bar. I'll just tell you up front. It doesn't ask you, can you do this barcode and not this barcode? You don't have to. There's hundred. It supports like 100 different barcode types. Okay. You don't have to memorize any of the barcode types specifically. That would be stupid. But I would, I would memorize that content and memorize that content right there. Monkey bread certification would suck because Chris Christian Schmidt would be a real piece of work about it and he would have questions on on question six on function six thousand three hundred and twenty one uh will will this work if you put a space in the function right it's like no <laughs> actually the, the test for monkey bread would be be like does it do this and it's yes or no and all you have to do is go through the test and say mostly yeses and you'd, you'd pass the test because monkey bread almost does everything every time right i'm being serious margaret's laughing at me right just say yes. If it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, no problem. Right? <laughs> All right, so insert from device on the test. Get account type on the test. There was another get that you had. Encryption functions. We were doing encryption functions when we wandered off. You said something about what specific oh, get. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Type the word encrypt in encrypt. There we go. Because it's a What's bunch the of function called? Uh, uh, encrypting and okay, so encrypting and decrypting databases. This is what Ed. Ed, are you listening? Ed. Hey, we're in class, Ed. I need an answer. I need an answer over there. Ed. Ed. Ed's dead. All right, need someone else to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the Marines. Say, Dad. Never, never send a fire marshal to do something when a Marine will do it for you. All right, so that right there is what ear coming down here, specifying options for developer utilities. Developer utility is how you run an ear on a file, right? Okay. Oh, keep in mind the share ID. They're going to ding zing you on the share ID. We should type that. That's another one. Generate signature capture. These encrypt things here, you don't really have to. I think this one, this one and these two, I think, are on the test. So once again, go learn them. I don't remember what the question says, but it it's not encrypting the file. It's encrypting the contents of a field, right? One share ID. This one tends to come up. Uh, I keep seeing this once in a while coming up. It's one that I don't even share. Shared, maybe shared ID? How about shared ID? It has to do when, when you're yeah, encrypting. Okay, here we go. Encrypting database files. There we go. So you need to understand if you have a multi-file uh, custom. Oh, and that's another good one. If you have a multi-file custom app, encrypting all the database with the same encryption password and shared ID. Okay. Uh, when one, you should actually, everyone should go through and just do this once, right? Like here's a file over here. See this file over here? I'm going to apply encryption at rest of this. So let's do this together. Everyone hold hands. One, two, three. We're going to do this together. I'm going to say database, developer utilities. This is where the runtime used to be. The runtime is gone, right? We all know that. Yes, runtime gone. Developer utilities. So you have to add the file in here. So first you have to say, we're going to do secret, unnatural things to your file. But we have to identify the file first. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to say workflow lock record demo. Okay, so here's the file here. Then uh, if we want to rename the file, we can do that. Uh, that allows you to rename a multi-file solution because it breaks the links. This can fix that for you or renaming safely. Uh, then you specify where you're going to save it, desktop. I'll say new file. I'll call it test for ed. And I see people typing over here. I'm not sure what they're saying. There's a finger here. Okay. Um, choose. 
Now you're going to say, what do you want to do this file? Okay, I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, these are the options that are in here. If this isn't on the test, this should be on the test. Remove admin access from the files permanently. This is when you remove the, 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 the privilege set full uh, access and brackets, removes it permanently. It cannot be put back in ever. It's, it's a one way. Uh, it's like putting a, a cow into a chipper, right? It, it, there's no way to put the cow back together after it goes through a chipper. This is kind of like a chipper. It does that. Enable kiosk mode, which mostly just hides the menus. Database must have a FileMaker uh, have extension. Create an error log. Enable database encryption or re-encrypt the files. Once again, this is ear. Once again, this, this, this dialog, this screen right here, was created by Claris Marketing or FileMaker Marketing back in the day. Encryption at rest is what this is. So we'll say encrypt. And then it'll create the log automatically. And then here's the share ID. Encrypt a copy of selected data for entering the, uh, by entering a, a username and password and assigned a full access privilege set and then assign an encryption password. The files encrypted at the same time will have the same encryption password and shared ID. So the shared ID is this kind of random date and timestamp, basically, right? And so I'm going to specify the account. I think it's admin, probably no password would be my guess. And then uh, the encryption password, one, two, three, four, five. It says it's weak, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the ear, password, hint, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right, so we say, okay, the hint should not contain the password. Okay, so that's one of those rare moments when Claris actually decided to give you guidance on how it should uh, not use uh, things like that. So I will put one, two, three, four, five. How about that? Okay. All right, so I'm going to come down here and say, okay. And then I'm going to say create. And then it runs this little thing, and then now it's done because it was super fast. So I'm going to come over here, test for Ed. Okay. So there's the log file. You could read the log file once again. If you want to talk about reading log files, come back tomorrow because I think Watson is talking about log files, right? Or reading log files, or maybe that was last week. So I double click the file. It's going to say, what is the ear password, right? We've seen this before. One, two, three, four, five, open. And I'm in, and then the admin, no password, was an auto-enter, okay? So this has that shared ID, right? That shared ID, you need to understand what the, you know, what that is and what it's about and why it matters. It's kind of important. So if I type shared ID, let's see where else it shows up. So, yeah, so multiple file custom apps can be linked with a shared ID. So if you have several files, yeah, Brad's a lot, Ed's a lot, good. All right, so questions about that. So th these are the things that are going on. And we can continue this conversation if we want to do more of this. I'm fine with this. Um, but, you know, all you need is 62%. So my goal would be if that Larry took the test again, he'd be over 50%. I know Larry would be going for the win. So you need to probably be over 60% would be my guess. Um, I'm just looking at my, my personal notes here. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bother learning about Claris ID. If you don't know SQL, don't learn it for this. Focus on everything else, right? Okay, let's try this one out. I think it's a good question. So let's back to uh, encryption. So I, I say the word encryption, so you know that it's something. It could be one of several different encryptions. Uh, 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 let's talk about a what, what would be true about encrypted data, sto data storage and transmission. So encrypted data storage, we think what, Ed? Or Larry as a backup? If I say encrypted data storage, here, correct, we're storing the file. And I say the word transmission, point to point, that's SSL, right? So let's, let's think about this. Uh, well, Claris loves to talk about this. So Claris has this uh, default SSL certificate that's provided with FileMaker Server. Uh, Klaus Levent, we did an SSL uh, event about a week ago on the live stream. That is only for testing purposes. It's not really uh, super encrypted. It's not really super safe. It's breakable or hackable by someone. So you need to be careful with that. So there is a built-in FileMaker server. that has like this SSL thing you can turn on. Um, but it's for testing only. Claris wants it to be for testing only. They haven't removed it because it can be kind of handy in a, in a pinch. But it's intended for testing your solution, okay? Um, 
If I say, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a sentence here. Listen to the sentence. <clears throat> if I import a custom SSL certificate, uh, will, uh, will that encrypt the database files on the FileMaker server? Anyone? No. Why? Because a, a SSL certificate is point to point, server to client. SSL certificate, uh, um, you know, your private key, all, the, all those terminology like that, it all has to do with point to point. If it's storage on the server, on the file, that is ear. Okay. So that's pretty good. Uh, uh, importing a SSL certificate uh, will encrypt the traffic between FileMaker server and FileMaker Go clients. Now they just identify, they go after Go clients or something, or they'll say something specific. And of course, that's yes, right? So if you are sharing a FileMaker, this is one of those things, like we say, don't use FileMaker Pro. FileMaker Pro is peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Don't use it for any mission-critical stuff. Only use it for a quickie ad hoc thing that you need one time for two or three hours or a day or something, right? A, a custom app hosted by FileMaker Pro, okay, can will encrypt will encrypt the data from itself to another client if you install an SSL certificate. There's nowhere to even install it on FileMaker Pro. There's no SSL certificate install function anywhere in the product. Okay, But that's the kind of stuff they throw at you. Okay, Privilege sets. Let's talk about privilege sets real quick. We'll, we'll end on this note um, for today. Privilege sets. You should understand um, in some of the test questions um, some of the test questions, it's easy to get a correct answer or to get you closer by, uh, by identifying the obviously stupid, wrong answers that they throw in there just to throw you off, right? So if I go file, manage, security, we already talked about this. Let's go to advanced settings down here. And I say privileges and I say extended privileges. You, everyone here should basically, I love you. Don't argue, shut up and memorize this list, okay? And basically kind of what it does. This one here is for ODB. And, and so this is, you know, let's just focus on this one thing at a time. So these are the external, external um, ex, uh, extended privileges that do extra stuff. You should understand what they do and kind of where they're used. Okay. And you should also understand that Claris will make up new ones and put them in the test to throw you off. For example, they will ask you about FM iOS or FM Pro. Right? Notice there's no FM iOS, FM Pro. There's no even FM Mobile. That would be a good one. Some of the names that they give make more sense than the, than the stuff that they have in here. Like FM App is stupid because it works for FileMaker on a FileMaker network. Where does that apply? It applies to Pro and Go, right? So it's really Pro and Go and not WebDirect, right? Because WebDirect is handled by this one, right? And so... It's important that you memorize this list and have kind of an idea of what they do. An important thing, I'm going to leave you with this last hot, hot tip, is that FileMaker server can go out and consume ODBC data. You're consuming it like an API. You're going out, collecting the data from some other source, something, or uh, Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, or Postgres. You're consuming it in. That's one thing. FileMaker server can also be a source where it's publishing data. So it's going the other way. Other systems outside are coming in through ODBC and collecting the data and taking it away. You need to, as you see ODBC and JDBC type stuff in the FileMaker system, you need to understand that that's attached to FileMaker server being a cons consumer of the data or the source of the data, right? You understand the difference, super important. This item right here, this XDBC right here, and I know they've done this a number of times. This has to do, you enable this when you want your FileMaker file to publish or be a source of data on the internet with uh, using ODBC or JDBC. So file, this isn't about, uh, the, the question would be something like this. I'm completely making this up, but this is what I'm saying. If you want to connect to, if you, if you want to connect to an Oracle server, you need the username and password of the Oracle server. You need an ODBC driver and you need to turn on FM XDBC. Wrong. That is, you turn that on for your FileMaker file to be a source to someone else. It has nothing to do with you reading other SQL data outside. So it's which way, we talk about this in the book, wherever my book went, understanding which way the data is going. Either you're consuming it in or you're sending it out. 
two different things, and the way you control those is with two different methods um, in the system. Um, and it never says in or out. I told the marketing department at Claris, I'll leave you with this, that they were trying to come up with ways of saying import and export, and and they were like, yeah, but I said, but you've already used the word import, export. And I looked at her and I said, you could say suck or blow, right? Suck the data in or blow it out, right? That's a combustion engine term. Uh, but she didn't think that was very funny. So, but I, I, so, yeah. So. <laughs> So Wait, never mind. That was a, that's a true, that, that was too. a true statement. And they knew they knew it wasn't they they knew it wasn't sexual. The point, but the point is, is that Apple would never say the word "suck" or "blow" in the same sentence on the same technology ever. But that's really what we're talking about: is this FileMaker server sucking the data in or blowing the data out, pushing the data out, suck and push, pull and push. We need, <laughs> so anyway, read or publish. Yeah, you could do that too. You can do that too, read or publish. Oh, they got to be careful because what I'm trying to do is tell them to use words different for different things. Like we already have import and export, and that we're mostly about records. But we keep using import, export, import, export. People say import, export. You have no idea which the hell, which one they're talking about, right? So, all right, well, that's it. I'm a little bit worn out. I need a drink, a little bit of a drink. Uh, Margaret, you have anything else for us over here? I mean, I haven't been looking at your screen too much in the last little bit. I've been. I mean, I've been attempting to keep up with notes. It's, it's, it's a, it's a adventure but it might be useful so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna publish this and give it to people you want to do that yeah okay yeah, cool. I'll do we that. will have all this for you tomorrow margaret will be there helping us jeremy i'm following well i'm glad you're here jeremy if you folks have questions let me know okay but it's it's a lot of material and and studying and doing better on the test makes you frankly better as a filemaker developer you get better at it um and you you understand kind of where the limits are and then where you where you need the monkey spread right so um because monkey spread is a very important product. So, cause, this cause, would be a fun yeah. certification question. At what point do you call Christian Schmidt and go, like, help? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how you'd phrase that, right? It's like, uh, yeah, there is one question there. If you want to do some sort of sinky stuff, should you just buy, buy a third-party product and say, screw it, right? They don't say that, but it's, it says buy a third-party plug-in. And it's like, no, you don't need a third-party plug-in. Do it this way, right? So. Anyway, it was kind of a fun test question. So, all right, well, FM privilege, FM Android would be a great privilege set. Yes, please, uh, please answer this question. Value of FileMaker certification study guide. Let's take a look at this. I'm gonna. This is Claris' study guide. This is obviously updated here. Tells you about this, uh, the structure of the test. Doesn't tell you that defining schema. Yeah, they're gonna hammer you on that. Yep, they're going to hammer you on that. Yeah, this is pretty accurate here. I mean, it's telling you what to study. Go development guide. Questions. What are five auto inner options available field? That's on. Okay, they won't phrase it. Okay, so let's just go through these. You guys want, if they want time, you want to go through this? All right. So let's just talk about this because I've been through this quite a bit. They are going to ask this question. They're going to ask it different ways. They're going to say, uh, what five auto inner options are available? Keep in mind the auto inner options are different from number fields to, to text fields to date fields. I don't think they ask about containers, but auto inner is different for containers too. They change. They're not all universal. So all those things you kind of just, you don't even really think about when you build it. I've been doing this 33 years. I never thought about that until they quizzed me on it. Um, and they might make something up along the way, right? So uh, what are the auto inner? That's on the test at least Two, two or three times that'll be on the test. Auto inner field options calculation. Do you replace this? Yes. When does the auto inner fire? And you have to explain like a new record and this and that and the other thing. This is abs this is absolutely on the test. That's absolutely on the test. What is the index for a field? Describe the two indexes available to FileMaker Pro. They really don't describe it that way, but you should know that. That's the partial index, which is used for relationships, and the full index, which is used for uh find requests right because a partial index is for relationships they never really say that that's not a test question like that but this is good to know okay or okay what field types can be indexed yes okay they don't really ask performance questions like will your application suck if you do a search on an unstored calculation they don't ask questions like that these are very like very mechanical kind of questions you can tell Richard didn't write the test. What method of setting a field with data are not considered data entry? Oh, okay. So like, 
if you do it, like for example, a replace command and import command, right, are ways of loading data in the system, and and they will or won't trip the uh, validation. That is absolutely on the test. Okay. Uh, list the order in which the following events occurs. Fields are exited, values are changed, values saved, values validated. Okay. Go back, and we've talked about this in our training. So, once again, this right here is covered at great length in the training in here. I'm not going to answer the question, but you need to understand the, ex the execution order of script triggers. There's like 18 script triggers or whatever it is, 15, 18 script triggers. And there's a beginning like in the progression of where they possibly could fire there's like i did a v graph it's it's where it starts and it starts at the, like the file level all the way down to the layout level all the way down to the record level all the way down to the field level and then back up the other side that's covered that is on the test i don't know so many questions on it but you should as a senior developer you should know that okay and if you don't know it check out our training it's an amazing deal and you won't be sorry and i you'll have my personal undying love in fact to be honest with you, when people call us and ask for help on stuff, the one of the first things I do is check to see if they've bought our training. And if they haven't bought our training, it's like, eh, eh, we're going to help this person. <laughs> Being serious, right? If someone's given me 250 bucks or 300 bucks or something for training, um, and they bought it, you know, at least one year of it, I'm much more likely to want to jump in and do answer free questions for them, right? A hosted FileMaker file has a container field that is stored globally and holds the company's logo. The field is placed on report in the preference table. The dealer inserts the logo in the container field. The user reports that the logo is not on any reports. What causes this? Okay, understand how global fields work. Understand how they are defined when you open a file. Understand how they behave if you are hosting the file locally on pro, and then you move it to server. What do globals do? Like one of you the other day asked, hey, the globals have values in it. And I put it on the server and the values are still there. How do I change that? There's no easy change. You have to take it off the server and change the globals and put it back on the server. That's why normally before I put on the server, I clean them out. You also do a startup script and starting point or any other system you like. And you set all those globals in advance as part of startup script. So they're all set correctly. So even if it's even if the global was saved with some funky value in it, you reset them as part of that uh, startup script, right? A custom app contains tables for teachers and classes. The teacher teaches as many classes. Yeah, you need to draw this out and look at what this is. This is a teacher, a class, a student. We've done relational. This is like the mini-to-mini -mini conversation we've had, and some of you had troubles with that. You need to be able to have – I would draw this chart out and think about it in advance because they will give you a chart, either this chart or another one like it. And it's, it's like got like seven or eight – table occurrences in a sequence right and they're like if you're over here and you have a cup of coffee and then you go to this record what will happen if you go all the way over here on this other side right so you have to kind of be able to jump through relationships and work your way progress through that right Th this right they just basically gave you the question right here on the test it's you better know this okay moving along and a FileMaker file there's a table called contact methods the table occurrence shows related to students okay if the developer wants to add a calculation field that stores a rah, 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 Yeah, yeah. So understand all this. This is very much on the test. Oh, they gave you the answers to the test here. Okay, to their little quiz. So imagine on this on the certification test, I think this actual, this exact one is on the test, to be honest with you. But they have this one, and then they have one where it's like, and then number four and five, six. Because remember, a teacher... I think you could have an administrative person who's also a teacher who talks to a remember a course is not the same as a class right necessarily a course and a class and then the student who attends the class and then the student right and you could also do that with job and employers so think about it from the job and employers i think that was another one they wanted to do like a boss administrative person then your manager then the people and they all might come out of the context file but they have different kind of right uh also understand the little symbols on these boxes right what these little symbols mean right if a box is in, if text is in italics if the, those are little crow's feet on there see the little crow's feet that's called crow's feet like ah, crow's feet right see that what does that mean what if it's a single one what if there's a dot or not a dot or whatever right what does that mean 
It means things. We all just wing it, going 9,000 miles an hour in the relational diagram. That's on the test. They just right there. So cool. Building layouts. Describe the implications of trying to tying a layout to a specific table table occurrence. Yes. Identify character behaviors that can be assigned to a portal. Master detail portal. Understand how that layout works. Like finds and changing and tabbing and all that kind of stuff. Not just a portal, but also the master detail. Uh, portal, which are two different kind of things. Describe field layout object behaviors that can be, which field and layout object behaviors can be modified. Describe the types and attributes of script triggers. Basically, you should have the script triggers <clears throat> more or less memorized. We already covered this in the execution sequence. You should also know kind of how they work, right? Given a scenario, identify the implications of choosing a particular trigger type. I guess that's in there, yeah. Identify the property capabilities of things. This one I hate. This is one I wish Nick Hunter would be on the test. Hey, Nick, what's the answer to this one, right? Like if you have a, a, a theme in focus and then you click over this over here and you have shadowing and... Uh, <laughs> so um, I'm, I, I'm like the guy that's like, hey, does it look good? Ah, well, that's good. Keep going. <laughs> um, so that one is one I always frustrates me on. It's one that if you take the test, make a note to yourself of what you saw and then go back and make sure you catch it. If you If you fail the test, go back and... <clears throat> hammer it because they'll say things like um things that like a theme like you know here's five things themes do here's five themes pick two of these things that themes will actually do right or they won't do right uh identify implication of, of layout design across different clients <laughs> for example web direct supports tables or not right so you have Form view, list view, table view. Are all those supported in all the different clients? Um, are card style windows supported in all the different clients? That used to be not the case. I think now they are, right? Um, be behavior of layout parts, right? Oh, uh, the navigational part, right? The navigational part, top and bottom of the screen. What is a navigational part as opposed to a classic header or footer? How are they different? What if you print? What if you don't print, right? You, under you understand how those work. By the way, those are once again covered in the amazing FileMaker training you can have here for an amazing low price of $299 or $199. And your training, is it your general four course that goes and studies stuff, noting all the training? Uh, when you buy, okay, so listen, so this is, okay, let's, let's talk about the amazing training you can have for the amazing low price, okay? Uh, if you go over here into the courses, I don't sell the courses individually anymore. We have a 19 course, we also have a 19 deploy course, which is like server and cloud, and we have the 19 go and web direct course. Um, these are like the core ones that you that are be in there that you really really want. There's also some other ones, um, some startup and entrepreneurs and UI, all the 18 courses and stuff like that. Um, and so uh, you would want to focus on these in here. But why don't we why don't we do like a two or three day um, thing in December on this, right? Um, Santa can deliver you questions and answers for a certification <laughs> test. And then, um, and then we'll cross-reference the videos that you should go watch in here on oh, it, be right? Good. That'd be good. Some, like, on our part to get that all set up. You have the bundle. Well, Schmeagle has the bundle. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to go through and cover. What we'll do is we'll cross-reference their uh, PDF with our training. Okay? And write that up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it'll be at least three days to do that. Space. We have empty space in December. All right, folks, I appreciate it. That's it. I'm going to run my new closing, closing one. So you'll see some more faces here, including, I think uh, we probably lost uh, Watson, but Watson, I think, is actually in here. I think he's in here. Right here. Ron, that's it. Right. <laughs>
report of an individual up here who uh, may be a biomaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 